Hello everyone. Topic of this lecture, anatomy of the organs of hearing and equilibrium. And as you understood, these organs, they are placed within the ear. Ear has three parts, external ear, middle ear and internal ear. External ear is located mostly on the outside of the body. And the middle and inner areas housed within the petrous portion of the temporal bone. Movement of the inner ear fluid result in the sensations of hearing and equilibrium balance. So today uh, we'll talk about anatomy of the external ear, middle ear, internal ear, and also about auditory pathway and vestibular pathways too. External ear that represent by the auricle, also known as pinna, and the external acoustic meters. That structure receives sound waves, conducts that sound waves, and transmit into the tympanic membrane. External auditory meters, this tube, C-shaped tube, length of which is 24 centimeters, 16 centimeters is bony portion and eight millimeters is cartilaginous portion that made up of elastic cartilage. The skin of external auditory meters uh, lined by hairs, sebaceous glands and ceruminous glands, also known as the wax glands that produce the cerumen or wax. In this presented diagram, we see the anatomy of the external ear, exactly the anatomy of the auricular pinna. Pinna consists helix, cruise of helix, and opposite to helix placed anti-helix that has two cruise. Then tragus, anti-tragus, lobule and some other structures such as scaphoid fossa, triangular fossa, concha, and that concha of auricle transmit into the external acoustic meters. In this presented diagram, you see the two uh, surfaces of the ear, uh, auricle, anterior and posterior surface. Nerve supply of the anterior and posterior surfaces of the auricle. Anterior surface of the auricle supplied by the auricular temporal branch of the trigeminal nerve and auricular branch of the vagus vagus nerve. And you see the position of that nerve and of that branches. And also supplied by the great auricular nerve, which is branch of the cervical plexus. Posterior surface of the auricle supplied by the uh, lesser occipital nerve and its branches and greater auricular nerve inferiorly. Blood supply. Blood supply of the auricle provided by the branches of external carotid artery. Exactly, it is a posterior auricular branch and superficial temporal branch. In this presented diagram, we see the coronal section of the ear, and we can distinguish here three portions of the ear. External ear, middle, and inner ear. Middle ear and inner ear placed within the petrous part of the temporal bone. External ear is understood represented by the auricle and external acoustic meters. Tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is thin 
transparent membrane, oval shaped, the measures of which is 9 to 10 millimeters, that lies obliquely, faces downward, forward, and laterally. Tympanic membrane consists of three layers and embryologically developing from the three germ layers. We can distinguish here outer layer. This is cutaneous layer. Intermediate layer is fibrous and inner is mucous layer. Tympanic membrane received and conducts sound waves to the middle ear. During, otoscopic, uh, during otoscopy, we can get this otoscopic view of the uh, tympanic membrane. And in this, this presented diagram, we see the otoscopic view of the right tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane uh, fixed to the tympanic sulcus, fixed to the tympanic sulcus of the temporal bone. But superiorly, this tympanic sulcus has deficiency. And at this region is represented by the tympanic notch. And from the each end of tympanic notch, two bands is extend toward the lateral process of the malleus, is posterior malleal fold and anterior malleal, mal, mal, malleal fold. And above this portion, the tympanic membrane called pars flaccida. And below this part called pars tensa, that also uh, tension of which is held by tensor tympani muscle too. And some other structure such uh, that is visible uh, during otoscopy uh, is the handle of malleus, umbo, cone of light. Middle ear is uh, located within the petrous portion of the temporal bone, consists tympanic cavity, auditory ossicles within tympanic cavity, auditory tube, and mastoid area. It is a four main components of the middle ear. So, middle ear consists the tympanic cavity, ossicles, auditory tube, and mastoid area that placed posteriorly. Mid layer has uh, six walls. It is roof, floor, anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral walls. Roof of the middle ear represent by tagman, tagman tympani. Tagman tympani it is superior border that separates from the middle cranial fossa. Floor, also known as the jugular wall. This thin plate of bone, thin plate of bone that separates from the jugular vein. Inferiorly, from the floor of the middle ear place jugular vein. Sometimes the, uh, this uh, thin plate of bone may be exchanged by the fibrous tissue. Anterior carotid wall char characterized by two openings. Superior narrow opening is opening for the tensor tympani muscle. Inferior is largest opening. It is opening for the auditory tube. Auditory tube, also known as the pharyngotympanic tube, eustachian tube. It is a canal that connects the middle ear with nasopharynx. And function of this canal, it is equalize the pressure out and into the tympanic membrane. Posterior mastoid wall has irregular aditus at antrum. It is opening that relate the posterior wall with of the tympanic cavity with the mastoid antrum and mastoid air cells. Medial wall of the 
uh, in middle ear, also known as the labyrinthine wall, separates from the inner ear. And this region characterized by the uh, some visible structures such as promontory and two openings. Superior is fenestra vestibuli, it is oval window, and inferior is fenestra cochlea, round window. Promontory is formed by the first turn of the cochlea. Fenestra vestibuli, it is an opening to which the base of the stapes is attached. And fenestra cochlea, it's open uh, to the uh, middle ear from the cochlea by the scala tympani and covered by the secondary tympanic membrane. Last one is lateral membranous wall. Lateral membranous wall. Now, this wall formed by the tympanic membrane. Auditory ossicles. Auditory ossicles, the three small bones within the middle ear that already develop after birth. That, that name of that bones is malus, incus, and stapes. Malus oh, means hammer, and incus it means anvil, and stapes means tira. Uh, that bones forms a bridge by synovial joints, synovial joint between malus and incus, and between incus and stapes. That bones, that ossicles transmit sound vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear and amplify their force. Auditory tube, also known as the pharyngotympanic tube or eustachian tube. This tube is opens into the nasal pharynx from the uh, middle ear. And air movement through this tube allows the pressure to equalize on both sides of the tympanic membrane during chewing, yawning, or swallowing. And in this presented diagram, we see the uh, cartilaginous part of the auditory tube. And it is extend from the uh, middle ear by the opening that called the pharynga tympanic groove. Superiorly, we can see foramen spinosum, foramen whale. Inferiorly, from this groove, we can see the carotid canal. And position of the carotid artery. Inner ear. Inner ear, anatomically consists bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth within the bony labyrinth. Inner ear is the place where vibrations is tran transduced to specific nerve impulses that are transmitted through the acoustic nerve to the CNS. Inner ear. Inner ear located within the petros uh, portion of the temporal bone, uh, such as middle ear too, where there are spaces or cavities called the bony labyrinth. And it consists of the vestibule, semicircular canals, and cochlea. Vestibule and semicircular canals, also known as the vestibular apparatus or vestibular complex. That vestibular apparatus consists of two sac like membranous uh, labyrinth parts that are known as the uh, utricle and saccula. They are interconnected through a narrow passageway. And semicircular canals of the vestibular complex, the membranous labyrinth, is called the semicircular duct. Cochlea houses a membranous labyrinth called the cochlear duct. Within the bony labyrinth are membrane lined fluid filled tubes and spaces called the membranous labyrinth that conceal the receptors for equilibrium and hearing. So, inner ear uh, consists bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. As you understood, bone labyrinth consists of the vestibule, three semicircular canals, the cochlea, and all of which is contained the perilymph, in which the membranous labyrinth is suspended. A membranous labyrinth at the same time contains the endolymph. The bony cochlea is snail-shaped uh, structure that consists that makes two and a half turns uh, and consists the upper scala vestibuli that opens by the 
oval window, also known as a fenestra vestibuli, and the lower scalar tympani that opens by the round window. In this presented diagram, we see the uh, bony labyrinth. Bony labyrinth, as we said before, it represents by the cochlea, vestibule, vestibule consists the saccular and utricle, and it uh, bony labyrinth also represented by the semicircular canals. We can see here the anterior semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal, and lateral semicircular canal. And also, in the, uh, at the point of vestibule, we can see two openings. It is an oval window, also known as a uh, fenestra vestibuli and round, uh, uh, round window, uh, also known as a fenestra cochlea. And these two openings, for example, superior um, oval uh, window is uh, to this window is base of the step is, is attached. Inferior round window is covered by the secondary tympanic membrane. In this presented diagram, we see the dissected uh, bony labyrinth. Then we can we are remember three parts of the bony labyrinth. There's a cochlea, vestibule, and semicircular canals. Same as we see. Semicircular canals, anterior, posterior, lateral, Z. Within these canals, the semicircular ducts is present. And here we see uh, internal cavity of the vestibule, and we see here some. Uh, depressions, uh, some that called that depressions called uh, elliptical recess, cochlear recess, and spherical recess. And this part is cochlea. Cochlea makes two and a half turns on the top. It is uh, this region called the cupula. So uh, it has two parts: um, scala vestibuli and scala tympani. And between them the uh, Bony uh, spiral lamina, bony spiral lamina present between them. And this scala vestibula opens by the oval window. And perilymph of the scala vestibula is transmit the fluid field vibration into the, uh, toward the helicotrema. And from this region, uh, this uh, extend toward the um, perilymph of the uh, this information is transmitted to the perilymph of the scala tympani. And from the scala tympani, this is transmitted to the round window, to the secondary tympanic membrane. Membranous labyrinth is suspended in perilymph within the bony labyrinth and is filled with endolymph. And this membranous labyrinth can see the sensory organs. Uh, in this present diagram, we see the uh, membranous labyrinth uh, with the nerves. We see that with the branches uh, of the eighth cranial nerve, known as the vestibular cochlear nerve, also known as the stator acoustic nerve. This uh, nerve has two branches. It is a cochlear branch and vestibular branch. A cochlear branch of this nerve is responsible for the hearing. Uh, for the for the hearing sensation and vestibular for the uh, equilibrium and for some reflexes. This membranous labyrinth, as we said before, placed or suspended within the bony labyrinth, within the perilymph of the bony labyrinth, and it has the represent by the so within the cochlea, it is a cochlear duct, cochlear duct within the vestibule represented by the utricle and saccular within the semicircular canals represented by the semicircular ducts, anterior semicircular duct, posterior semicircular duct, and uh, lateral semicircular duct. Cochlear duct consists the uh, special sensory organs, name of which is spiral organ of Curti, that can see the higher tails. And there we can distinguish the inner higher tails, outer higher tails. So 95% from the inner higher tails of the spiral organ of the corti delivered the information about hearing. 
spiral, spiral organ of the corti. And these semicircular ducts, anterior, posterior, lateral, each end by the uh, ampullas. And these ampullas can see the crystal ampullaris, it's a specific, specific um, structure that responsible for the dynamic acceleration. At this utricle and saccula, this structure is responsible for the static acceleration. And uh, so membranous labyrinth consists of the utricle and saccula. They are uh, dilated membranous sacs in the vestibule, uh, contain uh, the sense organs. So utricle and saccula contain the sense organs called the macula. And they are lined by the hair cells. And they are detect the linear acceleration of the head. So movement of the head in one uh, line. Uh, macula of the utricle has a horizontal orientation. The macula of the saccula has a vertical orientation. And semicircular ducts uh, <clears throat> that suspended by the perilymph of the semicircular canals consist, as you understood, represented by the anterior duct, lateral duct, and posterior duct. And the dilated ends are called ampulla, which detect the rotational or angular acceleration. Structures, structures for hearing. Structures for hearing, they are housed within the cochlea in both inner ears, uh, snail shape, uh, snail, uh, snail shape, spinal chambers of, in the bones of the inner ear has a spongy bone axis called the modulus. Membranous labyrinth houses a spinal a spiral organ organ of corti, uh, which is responsible for hearing. So in this presented diagram, we see the cochlea, bony labyrinth, and within bony labyrinth we see the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea, which represent by the cochlear duct. And as we said before, it is made the two uh, and half terms. So, and this specific structure uh, of, the, of what each part called the modulus that represent by the scalar vestibuli that uh, fills by a uh, perilymph, uh, scala tympani and scala media also known as a cochlear duct. So it is a membranous labyrinth of the cochlea. And this scala media contain the basal, basilar membrane. And this basilar membrane in which the heart cells is present here. Heart cells, inner heart cells, outer heart cells. Uh, next one, we'll talk about the pathways, um, pathways auditory pathways and vestibular pathways. So before to talk about the pathways, uh, we have to know the position of the structures. And as we see here, that's, uh, <clears throat> as we said before, the internal ear and middle ear, they are placed within the bony portion of the temporal bone. And, and this presented diagram, we see here the petrous portion of the temporal bone, petrous portion of the temporal bone. And we see here the opening that's called the internal acoustic meters, internal acoustic meters, along which, as you see, the vestibular cochlear nerve is transmitted uh, from the internal ear. Uh, at the same time, the facial nerve is tra transmit into the internal acoustic meters. So we are understand the position of these structures within the petrous part of the temporal bone. And we can see here, we can see here the cochlea, uh, vestibule, semicircular canals. It is a bony labyrinth of the inner ear. And we see here the <clears throat> uh, removed wall of the petrous part of the temporal bone. And we can see here the bony labyrinth, bony labyrinth, and within bony labyrinth, we can see here the 
membranous labyrinth that represent by the uh, semicircular dots. So semicircular canals consist of the semicircular dots. And they are opened by the ampullas, ampullas. So we can say it is anterior, it is posterior, it is a uh, lateral semicircular ducts. They are open into the corresponding ampullas. And we, uh, they are responsible for rotational and angular acceleration. And we can see here most upper it is utricle and sacular, which is responsible for the linear acceleration. And this one is the cochlea. Cochlea that mainly responsible for the hearing sense. And we can see here, most important at this point, it is uh, nerves, nerves. We can see here, it is a medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, in which we can see here the uh, nucleus, vestibular nucleus. It is a medial, superior, inferior, and lateral vestibular nucleus. At this part, we can see here the uh, anterior and posterior cochlear nucleus. So this nuclei, vestibular nuclei, responsible for the equilibrium. Equilibrium and some reflexes, such as vestibular or ocular reflex, for example. And this cochlear reflex is responsible for the hearing sense. And next, we will talk about the pathways, uh, vestibular pathways and auditory pathways. Then we see here. So this loop from cochlea, we can see here, so spinal organ, we say spinal organ of corti that can see the uh, <clears throat> inner higher cells. From 95% from the inner higher cells, fibers extend toward the uh, spiral ganglion. You can see here, spiral ganglion, spiral ganglion, spiral ganglion. So spiral ganglion consists the cell body of the first order neuron. This is the spiral ganglion. And exon of which extend along the cochlear nerve toward the uh, cochlear nuclei that placed within the medulla oblongata. In this side, we can see from the ampullas, from the crista ampullaris, and from utricle and sacula, some other nerve fibers extend toward the vestibular ganglion, also known as the scarpa ganglion. And so cell body of first order neuron is here placed within the vestibular ganglion and extend toward the, this nucleus, nuclei, vestibular nuclei, medial, superior, inferior, and lateral nuclei. Auditory pathway, as we said before, uh, from the cochlea toward the cochlear nucleus, and many fibers extend toward the contralateral side, toward the superior olive. Some of nuclei uh, extend toward the superior olive on ipsilateral side. And they are, that fibers extend toward the inferior colliculus of the midbrain. We are remember inferior uh, colliculus of the midbrain responsible for auditory uh, reflexes. From inferior colliculus, axons, is extend toward the medial geniculate body, medial geniculate body of the thalamus. And from the medial geniculate body of the thalamus is extend toward the uh, auditory cortex, auditory cortex. Vestibular pathways. Vestibular pathways we can divide into four types. It is a primary sensory pathway and next one is vestibular spinal tract. Vestibular spinal tract, we can divide into lateral and medial vestibular spinal tract. It is a descending tract, then <clears throat> lateral, uh, it is provide the innervation or nerve supply of the extensor muscles of the trunk and limbs. Medial is provide the nerve supply of extensor muscles of the upper part of the back and neck. 
And next type of uh, vestibular pathways, it is a vestibular ocular reflexes. Next one is vestibular cerebellar reflexes. So in this presented diagram, we see the scheme of the vestibular pathways. So we are saying uh, the, from the uh, membranous labyrinth, from the uh, ampullas of semicircular uh, semi uh, ducts, uh, and from the utricle and saccula, the nerve fibers extend toward the vestibular nuclei that placed within the medulla oblongata. And from these nuclei, we say first pathways, the primary sensory pathways, as we see from mainly from superior and lateral nuclei, vestibular nuclei, uh, along the medial lemniscus, the fibers extend toward the ventral posterior nucleus. And from the ventral posterior nucleus, along the internal capsule, uh, fibers extend toward the vestibular cortex. And when we say the uh, vest uh, of vestibular cortex, and uh, here, um, some uh, books describe such as uh, they are extend toward the superior temporal gyrus, uh, or some in some literature describe such as uh, to posterior uh, posterior to the somatosensory cortex. And we will talk about we will tell these two variants. Also, or we may say just vestibular cortex. Then <clears throat> next one is vestibular spinal reflex. Vestibular spinal reflexes or vestibular spinal tracts from the lateral and medial and inferior, or mainly from lateral and medial uh, and inferior too, okay. Then the uh, <clears throat> nerve fibers extend along the lateral vestibular spinal tract and along the medial vestibular spinal tract toward the uh, corresponding part of the body and provide the innervation of extensor muscles. Next one is this, uh, <clears throat> it is a, a vestibular ocular uh, reflex, uh, vestibular ocular reflex for innervation of the uh, muscles of the eye, muscles of the eye. Uh, and we can see here toward the oculomotor nucleus, that provide the nerve supply of superior, medial, and inferior rectus muscles. And um, some branches, some fibers extend toward the abducens nucleus that uh, innervate the lateral rectus muscle. And some uh, fibers extend toward the trochlear nucleus that uh, innervate the superior oblique muscle. Then last one is fourth pathway. It is a vestibular cerebellar yeah, reflexes uh, from the uh, nuclei, vestibular nuclei, to along the uh, inferior cerebellar peduncle that provide the uh, connection of uh, medulla oblongata with the cerebellum uh, toward the flocular nodular lobes. And this part uh, toward the vestibular cerebellum or flocular nodular lobe. Uh, uh, flocular nodular lobe is use information about the movement of the head for the influence of the movements of the eyes. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.